Roads? Where we're going, we don't need roads. Flying cars are finally almost here. But are they going to live up to the hype? You know, honestly, I don't know how flying cars became the cliche of science fiction. Maybe it was films like Blade Runner and The Fifth Element that made flying cars look so mundane and dingy that it's a wonder we weren't turned off by the concept in the first place. But then when I think about it, the reason really becomes obvious. I mean, according to Texas A&M Transportation Institute, Americans spent 5.5 billion hours in traffic in 2011. That's over 600,000 years. When you're stuck in traffic, nothing seems more enticing than the thought of floating off the ground and zipping directly to your destination. So is this just science fiction fantasy? Maybe not. The Aeromobile V2.5 is a propeller-driven two-seater that theoretically you could drive from your house to the local airstrip and go on a flight of around 400 miles or so. Just don't forget to unfold the wings first. And then the American company Terrafugia is working on a similar roadable aircraft called the Transition. And they plan on having that available on the market by 2015. But when most of us think flying cars, we're not really thinking about something we have to drive to the airport to use. We want a vertical takeoff and landing vehicle similar to the DeLorean at the end of Back to the Future. But that's much, much harder. Okay, it's future time. It's morning rush hour and the in-town roads are gridlocked, but you simply roll over to the nearest vertical takeoff and landing pad, stopping at the drive-thru for coffee and a bagel on the way. Once you reach a takeoff area with about 50 feet of clearance on all sides, you hit the switch. Vertical takeoff might be done with a system of ducted fans or a cutting edge quadrotor design, or maybe tilter rotors like the V22 Osprey, except retractable for driving mode. Now, vertical takeoff is usually a loud, dangerous, and fuel-guzzling affair, but some solutions could be on the way. A hybrid power system that uses electric motors could cut noise pollution and harmful emissions. And designers could improve fuel efficiency by using lightweight composite materials to cut down on that base vehicle weight. Plus, flying cars could naturally improve the odds by flying in a straight line to their destination, not taking that zigzagging, stop and start approach that city drivers have to take. Now, if you wanna control one of these vehicles yourself, you're probably going to have to get a pilot's license. Now, that might sound like a bummer to you, but it's great news for everybody else. I mean, just imagine that guy who cut you off in traffic this morning. Do you really want that guy piloting a thousand pound vehicle 50 feet over your head? There is a better solution, and it's autonomous, autonomous, autonomous. If flying cars are to be a widespread part of our future, they absolutely have to be autonomous, very much like the proposed design for the TFX. Instead of piloting the vehicle yourself, you push a button and let the computer do the job. You just enjoy your bagel and your coffee on your very short trip to work. Which brings us to a question. Do you think that flying cars are really just hype? Or are they really gonna be part of our future in the next few years? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you like it and subscribe to our channel and share it with your friends. And once you're finished with all that hard work, your reward is you can watch one of these.